we've got ourselves a good old Texas hornworm. Hey everyone, it's Rob the Backyard Gardener here and I'm just gonna do a pepper tour. I've got some growing indoors, which I'll show you first, and then I've got uh, a couple of different uh, varieties growing outdoors as well. I have some to harvest, so I'm gonna harvest a couple of them and just show you where they're at. Anyway, join me as I go ahead and give you a pepper tour and a pepper harvest. So the first couple of peppers I wanna show you are the Jay's Peach Ghost by Chocolate Ghost. These individual brands are a Ghost Scorpion brand, and the pods in these you would think would typically be all wrinkly, but these pods are gonna come out most likely smooth because when you cross these two varieties, the pods I've seen online are a lot smoother. But I wanted to give you a good look at the pepper. These are really short, bushy type pepper plants, and the pods will grow at the bottom. Matter of fact, when this pepper's a lot bigger, when you look down on it, you won't even really see the pods because the pods hang from below. But I've got a couple of them outside as well, and then I've got these two indoors, kind of hedging my bets. I've got several shishito peppers. Let me go ahead and pull this guy down. It's a good looking pepper plant. Produces uh, three inch long pods, kind of like a serrano, but a little more flat and they're very flavorful. Heat's more like a jalapeno at the most, but I've got one here, and I've got a couple of smaller ones back here. Really good looking peppers. I've got a chocolate scotch bonnet. Now this guy really struggled with aphids, and um, that's why you see the leaves all curled here. I probably would do good by just removing those. The newer leaves look good, but the ones that were covered in aphids, which I didn't even notice, but they were covered in aphids. You recall, this, this guy right here, the Brazilian ghost back there, and a few others I pulled from outside just as a test to see if I brought them indoors would they perform better, and as always, there must have been a few aphids on it when I brought it in, but he's recovering fine, I'm happy. Again, we have this Brazilian ghost back here. Good looking pepper plant for how small it is right now. Here's to see how he does indoors. And then one of my favorite pepper plants is this reaper that I've got here. I'm gonna bring this guy down so you can take, see a closer look of him. So here's the reaper. I'm gonna give you guys a good look. He's a really healthy looking plant. Really bushy. You know what's funny is I didn't even top this guy. Typically, um, peppers they grow long and skinny like the shishito ones I showed you but if you top them they come out like this and I didn't even top this guy but look at all the branching he has going on it's a fantastic looking pepper plant I'm gonna be growing this guy indoor all season so I'm really excited to see the kind of reapers he produces and then down here I have one of my Caribbean blend peppers let me get him out of this grow light bit. but yeah this Caribbean blend pepper looks really good as well he was not doing that well i forgot to water him and he turned pretty yellow but he's starting to recover now so i'm pretty happy about that if you watch last year's gardening series you'll see that i really love the caribbean blend peppers they actually have a scotch bonnet look and a uh, habanero taste but it's so fruity and sweet it's great for pretty much anything sauces uh, chopped up in salsas you name it you can use it, it's very versatile. It's my, one of my favorite peppers of all time. And we've got one growing, so I'm pretty happy about that. All right, everyone, you've seen the peppers indoors. Now let's check out the progress on the ones outdoors. I wanted to focus in on the peppers that I have going here. I do have a uh, Fresno pepper down here. Let me go ahead and give you a good look at this guy. Good looking pepper. It's pretty much time for him to come off. If you don't know about the Fresno peppers, they're about a little bit hotter than a jalapeno in my opinion. Maybe as much as a serrano pepper. You can pick them green and eat them green like a jalapeno and they turn red just like a jalapeno does. I find that the flavor is a little more heat and a little more sweet when they're red. Looked like he was getting bit at so I'm glad I pulled him off. We'll go ahead and put him inside the basket for right now. I'll point out on that Fresno pepper I do have a few more peppers are growing on it as well. I've also got a couple of New Mexico Big Jims over here. You know, these peppers get a lot, lot bigger than this. This is only about four inches. 
they get about, uh, I've had them as large as 13 inches long. Um, most of the ones last year were nine to 10, but only one fruit on it. So not doing too well yet on the two plants, but it's getting the flowers finally. They'll start setting fruits. We've got an outdoor seven pot bubblegum large struggling guys. It's weird, I told you uh, the last time I updated you on peppers, they took a long time to grow last year. And when they finally grew, they put on pods like crazy because they were so stout and thick and bushy, the plants. But they never matured before the frost hit and killed them all. So I had to do a green pepper harvest. I'll put the link below so you can take a look at it. But basically, I need all my pods green, which was okay, but it's not, it's not what you want. We've got a chocolate scotch bonnet pepper right here. And it looks like he's starting to recover now. They like the heat. They just, what they do in the heat is they put on a lot of green foliage. They just don't produce pods because the flowers drop. I'm hoping in the next two or three weeks, the pods go on like crazy. The flowers sit like crazy. We get tons of peppers here in about a month. We got a Brazilian ghost here. You know what? I'm happy with how he's come out. He's a pretty good looking plant. I didn't even top this one. And normally I top my peppers but uh, I didn't feel the need to top him because of the way that his canopy looked. We've got a really nice Carolina Reaper pepper here. I did top, or I should say trim, several of the branches on this guy, mainly to promote him from to being more bushy. He was really tall and lanky, kind of like some of these that I should top. The reason why I'm not topping my big gems is all the all the flowers are on top of this and I didn't want to stop the production right now but this reaper looks really good as far as his uh, height and uh, his canopy that he's developing but you can see he had the typical Y there but nothing below we'll see how he comes out we have an aji habanero this guy is really not that healthy he's tall he's putting these little tiny flower pods on and they just fall off once they open so I'm not too excited about how he's doing it's my first time growing an aji habanero, so I don't know if that's normal or not, but he doesn't look very good. Down here we have a white devil's tail. Again, he's just now starting to take off. I did love the few peppers I got off these last year, so I'm really hoping that this guy takes off here shortly, puts on some height, gets healthy, puts out some pods. That I planted or transplanted some indoor grown peppers to outside only one of the Jay's peach chocolate uh, ghost survived. He looks like he's gonna be just fine. We have one, two, three Shishito peppers, as well as another New Mexico Big Jim, and they're doing pretty good as well. Over here, we have orange habaneros. You know, I wasn't gonna pick these, but since we're doing the pepper video, it's a little bit immature still. But that's a pretty good pepper. He'll finish ripe, ripening up in the house. I'm pretty happy with that. We have a couple of orange habanero plants. That's the only pot on it right now. So these guys will probably start producing in the next few weeks as well. Next to the orange habanero, I have a couple of serrano pepper plants. I've been pulling these guys off like crazy. In the heat, I like to pull peppers that I enjoy eating green off early so the plant can keep on producing. Serranos and jalapenos, I prefer them green over red so I think we have a couple on this plant that I'm just gonna pull off now to continue to let him produce more looks like this one was already starting to turn a little bit and then we got several more on this one And again, I like picking these a little bit premature so that it focuses its energies on a lot of the small ones. So not a bad little Serrano pepper harvest at all. And then I have a couple of mammoth jalapeno plants back here. Now these are supposed to get four inch fruits and I don't think there's any really worth harvesting. I'll grab this one off first. You know what, that's not a bad one. Let me see if there's any more that I'm willing to pick off right now. There is other jalapenos on there. Maybe not this one. I'll grab that one as well. You know what? 
these are all pretty good sizes so I'm gonna pull off those three and leave the other three for now but those came out pretty good I'm pretty happy about that for jalapenos and then back in this corner I have a few more serrano pepper plants and we've got a few really good looking pods ready to come off here not a lot in this corner go ahead and pull these off I probably could have let that one be a little bit longer but again these plants are struggling in the heat so as soon as the pods are good enough to eat oh my potent I didn't know it then I'm pulling them off I think this one can go a little bit longer now nah, we'll get it we'll get it there we go and we've got Another one down here, which I'll go ahead and pull off as well. So here's a nice four more serranos. We'll add them to the basket here. And now let's go grab a few more jalapenos. I've got regular size jalapenos over here. And guys, there is a ton on these plants. I probably can't even give you the, the sheer volume of them because of the, the lighting right now. But what I am gonna do is pull off quite a bit because I want to let these plants refocus their energies back on being healthier. Here's a nice looking jalapeno. A little bit short, but I'm, I'm fine with that. And we've got another one down here. Good looking one right here. You know, the one thing I like about the jalapenos is they get this wrinkly skin and then they'll turn red. Looks like we got a few more that I can grab. Hold off three more, which I'm happy with. Back in this corner, I have a whole bunch of Fresno peppers. You've already seen the one red Fresno pepper that I pulled off the other plant. We've got another one just about ready to come off. So we're gonna pull them off anyway. It's good looking pepper. Got other green ones coming in on these. There's quite a bit actually. Looks like we got three mammoth jalapenos, 12 serrano peppers, two Fresno peppers. I only pick these when they're red. I don't pick them when they're green. I prefer them red. One orange habanero that's got some counter ripening to do. And then 10 regular jalapenos. And like I said, I like to try to pick them when they're just starting to get the wrinkles. Some of these were just starting to get them. But anyway, that's not a bad little pepper harvest. And I'm pretty happy and stoked about it. Well, there you have it, everyone. That's my hot pepper update. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm trying to give you a little bit of a sneak peek at what peppers are going to start being productive here in the next 30 to 45 days. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.